YouTubers. It's Bob Curry, SES Lock Picking and Survival. I'm going to take you a stage further with our lock picking now. Um, my last video was two lever locks, bullet warding. We're now going to go on to the three lever lock. This is what I call the um, it's the the proper lock, where every other lock from now on is is based on this one. Okay, all the principles of operation, the way you read the key the way you change the levers, all other lever locks stem from the same, including the opening techniques, and we'll be using the two-in-one pick, this tool here. Okay, first of all, let's have a look inside the lock. Right, let's have a look inside the lock. First thing we're gonna do is remove the cap. Undo the cap screws. and take the cap off, put it to one side. Now, it's a very similar um, setup inside to the bullet warding. We've got the action at the top, the follower. This is a single action or one-way follower, not a double. Follow spring and guide bolt spring. Then we've got the dead bolt, the head of the bolt. The pivot post is still against the head of the lever because it's a cheaper lock. We've got um, three levers in here with two spaces. Now, there's the eye of the lever, the, the hole that sits um, over the pivot and there's the lever spring. Right, we'll strip it down, right? Putting it out, it's stripped a bit quicker than I wanted it to, but there we go, we'll get the hang of it. It's not a problem. There it is stripped. With these locks, remove that spring, because that will bite you, all right? We'll take the dead bolt out. If we look at the dead bolt, that's the talon there where the key sits in and throws and retracts the bolt, and that there is the bolt stunt, the direct locking device. These are guides, yeah? Um, also known as lanket holes. And upstairs we've got the, the follower and the guide. I'll just take this off, follower spring. There and there. This is in reverse order. It can go either way. But there's the layout of it. Quite straightforward. To put it back together, I'll put the action back in. Put the uh, follower spring and guide in. The horn, it's a single horn. There's one horn on the bottom, nothing at the top. That engages at the bottom there, like that, pushes in and just sits in. Then what we do, we put the spring in underneath there. This is similar to a lot of locks, this sequence of doing this. We then take the dead bolt. When I put my locks back together, I always throw the bolt. I find it's the easiest way when the dead bolt is thrown. Notice I'm using this mat with little perforations in like a waffle tray. And what I do is line the keyway up over one of the waffle trays. So when I put the pin of the key through there, it doesn't push against there or somewhere else. If we look at the key quickly, we've got five steps on the key. One, two, three, four, five. The only ones we use are, number, are position one, two and three, four and five, throw the bolt. Okay, so if we look at that, we've got two steps the same. So there's a pair of steps there and there's a high lift. So to find these, if I was to mix them up like this, and I want you to put them back together. And I did this. Yeah, it put me spaces to one side. The first thing I'd have to do is find the pair, which is the one in the middle, the third position, and the one in the first position. So if I look there, I can see that one and that one are similar. That one's completely different. That one is a high lift. It's got no bar on the bottom, a very narrow belly, long lever face. That would be the highest lift in the pack, probably a number one. If I look here, I've got a pair of levers. These are very similar to each other. The lever face is about the same length. The bar and belly are the same. In fact, if I put them on top of each other and hold them together like that, they are the same height both ways round. So that is the same lever. So what I'm going to do there is put one of those at the top in the third position there, one, the high left in the middle, which is that one there, and the other one at the bottom. So it's low, high, low, low, high, low. Yep. To load up from the top always, bend it in, bring it round, take the spacer, put a spacer in, and bend the next one, the high left, round, spacer, and then put the bottom one in. Okay. We now put the cap on, hold it in position, and throw them in track. And that works. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open the lock. So I'm gonna take the cap off and use a Perspex cap. 
These are good for training. You can make these up out of perspex yourself. All you've got to do is copy that, lay it on some perspex, draw around it, get a little fret saw and cut around it, or use a mini Dremel. Yeah, we put that on, that sits on there, and then we put the screws in. If I was teaching this normally in a class, it would take a lot longer than this, but for a film, I'm just rushing through so you've got a general idea of what's going on inside here, what actually happens, all right? With these Perspex caps, they're not the best for doing this because they don't give you the right distance off the case. So you have to loosen the screws up slightly to get it to work. But that one's working now. Okay. Right then, what we're gonna do now is use the two-in-one pick which we discussed in a previous video. We've got the inner bar with a long pin on the end and a step and an outer sleeve, this part here, with another step. These two steps are the same height. With this tool, at no time do you ever adjust the height of them steps. They stay like that. You've got a wheel on the front and a wheel on the back. Both wheels have got a threaded hole in them. One there and one on there. And you've got a bar. That bar either goes to the rear or the front. If the bolt shoots to the left, the wheel goes to the rear because that is your bolt, that is your bolt throw it actually your lever lifter. If it's the other way around where the bolt shoots to the right, you put the bar on the opposite wheel because that becomes your bolt thrower and that, uh, sorry, that becomes your lever lifter, that becomes your bolt thrower. But in this case, it shoots to the left. So that's your, your bolt thrower, that's your lever lifter. Right, to open the lock, what we do, we put the two steps together and turn it upside down. I'll show you on the outside of the lock to start and then I'll do it from the inside. We go in all the way and if I was at the back of the case, I'd hit the back. Then I'd lift the, the step up till I engage in the talon. And then what I do is everything goes clockwise with this particular lock to pick. I've got to find out where the pivot post is there. So what I've got to do is find out the most resistance. Is it that way? Or if I turn it round, is it that way? So we'll do this. I go in, I hit the back of the case, and then you'll know you'll hear the bolt clunk as I turn the, the bolt thrower. Like that. So that tells me I'm in. I then come back to the rear and lift the lever, the first lever in front of me and feel the tension. And then I lift the, the other side, it's a lot lighter. So it tells me that the picking, the tension goes clockwise, the picking goes anti-clockwise. So I lift the first one, I'm counting my levers now, two and three and the bolt. I've only got three levers in that lock, I know that. So I'm gonna put tension on in that direction. Now what actually achieves this is if you can see the stump just here, when I put tension on, it pulls back against the back of the lever face. Watch that move. There. I'll do that again. It pulls back there. So when I keep the tension on like that and lift the lever, it stays up in the air like that. When I let go, it will drop. So I'm going to put tension on in the clockwise direction and pick the anti-clockwise way. So I'll give it a little tickle on the first one, the tickle on the second, tickle on the third. And it's just a matter of going along tickling. That's all you do. Don't put massive lifts on it as it won't work. And you just keep doing this till it goes. Now, yep. all the way to the rear. And you can come forward as well, back towards you. Just tickling away at them. Nothing big. Yep. Yeah. Until it opens. All the way. Sometimes you have to release the tension a little bit and just give it a little bit. It's not the best with these caps on because what you're seeing, that first one's holding up. There it goes, it's opened. The first one is holding up and you get that quite a bit because the plastic cap is sticking against the lever. What we'll do now is we'll do it without the cap on. Right then, we put the cap back on the lock. We've got the two in one ready. We're gonna try and do the same thing, it's locked. We're gonna try and do exactly the same thing now with the cap on, so bolt in, uh, tool in, hit the back of the lock, engage in the talon, light tension clockwise, come to the rear of the lock, find out where the tension is, yep, it's lighter to the left, much lighter to the left, count the levers, one, two, three, I mean it might be a five lever lock, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five. Anything with a plain keyway, with a keyway like this, without a curtain or a bullet warding in, any obstruction, any warding, this tool will open. 
It's the same principle of operation for cupboard locks, drawer locks, where they've got pipe, uh, pipe keys in them and drill pins, and also for um, safes where you've got pipe or um, pin keys. Okay, so let's do it. So very gently, just nibble away. Don't lift it up massively, just little touches. Yeah, and we're just going forward gently. Get your head in the lock when you're doing this. So you're thinking about how it works. Remember what I said about the doctor, thinking about your leg or your foot and what's going on inside, and it's exactly the same here. That clunk that you just heard tells me that as the stump has just gone in, a, or a gating has just lined up with the stump. Clunks are good when you're picking. Yeah, We've got a little bit of movement there all the way around, so that says there might be an overlift on here. So what I do now is release, let the tension off and put it on quick. Like this. And sometimes it works. Didn't that time, so we go back to picking. One, two, three, and back to this, the cap. One, two, three, and back. One, two, three. As you can see, nothing's rigged. Everything works properly here. Everything's got the correct amount of levers in. There's no mileage in putting one lever in a lock and saying, look how easy that was. I love it when things go wrong. There's that clunk again, because it shows you that we're doing it right. I'm just releasing the tension off again, moving the levers, and there it goes. Now, okay, that didn't take too long. In, with the long and the short of it, it wasn't that long. Yeah, it was only a few minutes. If you can go to someone's door and open it like that, everyone's going to be pretty happy. You haven't drilled it, you haven't damaged the door, you haven't done anything wrong. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. Okay. So that was a demonstration on how to open the three lever lock. Remember what I said, once you know how to use one of these, you can use them on cupboard and drawer locks, which are different versions of them. You get the pipe pick, you get the different gauge diameter pins, and don't forget in the, in the, same, in the lock game, we start with a zero gauge pin up to a 12, but we normally use five to eight gauge. We're using half gauges in between. That's what these tools come in, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven and eight. Yeah, those are the styles of gauges for, the, for these locks and safes. So if there's no curtain, this tool should be able to defeat it if it's a mortise lock. If it's a cupboard or drawer lock, there are special picks, but they work the same as these, okay? And safes, there are special picks again, but they look like these and they work exactly the same. So when you can work this one, you can work them all, okay? It's very, very straightforward. Right, if you wanna come on one of my courses, my two-day courses, I would teach you how to do this. It's all right watching a video, but the problem is that you need hands-on training. You need to know what you're doing and you need supervision. I run a two-day course, one day's pin tumbler, lock picking, and one day's lever lock picking, where we go through all of this and all of the other stuff I've done and stuff to come, right up to British Standard where we use, as I said, the Gucci kit. My courses are only 670 pounds, for two days, which includes two nights B&B. &B. Um, you get as much tea and coffee as you want all day for free, and obviously the pleasure of my company. And I will teach you everything I can in those two days. All right? So my name's Bob Curry. This is SES Lock Picking and Survival, and thank you for watching.